Cancer is the second greatest cause of death in the United States. An estimated 54 million Americans now living, or one person in four, will eventually have cancer. While approximately 225,000 will be saved from cancer this year, another 113,000 will probably die, who might have been saved through earlier and better treatment, or had there been available sound preventive measures. It is generally agreed that the major hope for significant reduction in cancer morbidity lies in early detection or prevention of the disease. Authorities estimate that 60 to 80 percent of human cancers are caused by various hazardous environmental elements or carcinogens. During the past several years, there has been an increasing awareness of environmental carcinogens and their role in the rising incidence in certain types of cancer. In June of 1975, the National Cancer Advisory Board recommended the establishment of new carcinogenesis centers and the development of programs designed to isolate and control carcinogenic agents in the environment. Recognizing the need for expansion of programs devoted to cancer cause and prevention, the University of Texas System Cancer Center is developing a carcinogenesis center where qualified scientists can pursue innovative programs of research on the environmental determinants of cancer. Manning and development of the Carcinogenesis Center is coordinated through MD Anderson Hospital and Tumor Institute of the University of Texas System Cancer Center. The Cancer Center, which includes Anderson, the Extramural Programs Division, and the University Cancer Foundation, is noted for its contributions in research and education and its programs in the care of cancer patients. The newly formed Carcinogenesis Center will function within the Anderson facilities as well as those being developed at the Science Park in Central Texas. The first phase of construction of the Carcinogenesis Center's facilities at the Science Park was signaled in January 1976 by breaking ground for the initial research and conference buildings. Located in a relatively remote section of Bastrop County, the Science Park provides an excellent setting for the creation of this major national carcinogenesis center. Scientists believe that the natural environment of the park will greatly reduce such problems as urban pollution and crowded conditions, which often affect the subtle processes involved in research activities. The concept of the Science Park was originated more than 13 years ago by Dr. R. Lee Clark, president of the University of Texas System Cancer Center. Dr. Clark recognized the need for research programs specifically concerned with the influence of biohazards upon the health and well-being of man, plants, and animals. The Bisher Division of the Science Park is located near the town of Smithville. This land was originally a part of the Bisher Family Tract, donated some years ago to the state as a park under the management of the Texas State Parks and Wildlife Department. Through the generosity and cooperation of the Bisher family, the city of Smithville, and the Parks and Wildlife Department, the University of Texas system was deeded over 700 acres of this beautiful wooded land for use as a science park. In 1971, the 62nd Texas Legislature authorized the Board of Regents of the University of Texas System to establish, maintain, and support the Science Park. And the University of Texas System Cancer Center's MD Anderson Hospital and Tumor Institute was given administrative and business management. The other section of the Science Park is the 361-acre Camp Swift site, deeded to the University of Texas System by the Texas Board of Health Resources. Here, the Veterinary Resources Division houses many species of animals used in research. It is expected to become the primary center in animal production, research, supply, and maintenance for educational and research institutions throughout the Southwest. These two divisions of the Science Park are separated geographically, but they interact closely and have one general purpose. The study of the relationship of man and environment, including research in such diverse areas as environmental carcinogenesis, systems ecology, and animal genetics. Facilities under construction at the Bisher Division include research laboratories, a conference center, and maintenance headquarters. In order to correlate the physical facilities with the natural wooded setting of the park, buildings have been proposed which will disrupt the environment as little as possible. The two research buildings, the first of which is designated as the Jesse H. Jones Research Laboratory Building, will each contain eight modular double laboratories and necessary support facilities, and will be devoted to research in carcinogenesis and its mechanisms, with facilities for studies in tissue culture, 
microbiology, biochemistry, virology, and biology. They will also include veterinary clinical pathology and histopathology service laboratories, and a biohazard animal holding facility, as well as an area devoted to electron microscopy. A research advisory committee has been appointed to advise the Cancer Center's administration in the operation of the Carcinogenesis Center. This committee is composed of nationally and internationally distinguished biomedical scientists whose disciplines and areas of research are related to current studies in cancer cause and prevention. Dr. Charles Shaw, chief of the section of medical genetics at MD Anderson Hospital and Tumor Institute, has been appointed as acting director of the Carcinogenesis Center. The long-range objective for the center is the reduction of human cancer through preventive procedures directed at identified causes. Because environmental factors such as chemicals and other agents contribute to a high proportion of human cancers, it appears quite feasible to approach the problem by ascertaining what compounds and physical elements are responsible for the many types of cancers that occur in man. Programs designed to detect and monitor environmental health hazards and their toxicological effects on plant and animal life will be conducted. Presently, over 40 different projects are being conducted by Anderson staff investigators. Those studies now being carried out or proposed for the future include methods for detection of compounds having carcinogenic activity. Staff researchers are engaged in developing methodology based on the production of mutations in cultured mammalian cells and in bacteria and viruses. Metabolism of chemical carcinogens. Studies are in progress of a number of carcinogen metabolizing enzymes in an attempt to develop tests which can determine those persons who are more or less susceptible to certain chemicals. DNA damage and repair. Researchers are studying many of the repair enzymes with particular reference to whether diminished amounts of some of these repair enzymes result in increased susceptibility to chemical carcinogens. Genetic environmental interaction in carcinogenesis. Most human cancers occur both in hereditary and non-hereditary forms. Environmental carcinogens may dramatically affect the site and age of hereditary cancers. Study of environmental agents in those predisposed to cancer may lead to increased understanding of carcinogenesis and identification of environmental carcinogens. Mutation induction in mammalian cells. Investigators are studying mutations in mammalian cells caused by radiation and chemicals. The cell cultures being used for this study are of human and animal origin. Viral chemical co-carcinogenesis. The agents now emerging as carcinogens include viruses, hormones, various types of chemicals, and physical agents such as radiation. The developing program within the carcinogenesis center is directed toward the study of interaction between these agents in the causation of cancer. Close association will be maintained between the Carcinogenesis Center's research staff at the Science Park and other investigators, not just at MD Anderson, but those within the various units of the University of Texas system, as well as other educational and research institutions throughout the state and nation. In addition to the research activities to be conducted at the Science Park, Scientific conferences and faculty seminars will be held in the Interpretive Conference Center. The floor plan of the center illustrates its functions, which will be conducted in an auditorium, an audiovisual area, smaller conference rooms, and library facilities. Public education and interpretive programs about the environment are planned for the conference center. A wide spectrum of information will be communicated through exhibits and discussions, acquainting visitors with current scientific and environmental studies. Nature trails are planned to incorporate areas of interest unique to this setting. The Veterinary Resources Division offers planned animal facilities for research complementary with the Bisher Division. This division is not a replacement for existing research and animal facilities but is to be used to relieve some of the pressures on urban research centers and to provide specialized care that these centers are unable to provide. Improvements and renovations to this World War II basic training camp to make it more suitable for animal housing are being completed. Two existing buildings have been repaired and are in use. Fencing, gas, water, and sewage lines and a large-scale irrigation system have been installed.
cattle, goat, and sheep pens have been erected. In addition to the renovated buildings, six monkey silos and two primate buildings have been constructed to accommodate the rhesus monkey production. The cages are specially constructed to allow careful surveillance of social colony breeding and delivery of the offspring, one of the several conservation measures now being practiced at the science park. Two steel buildings have been erected to serve as the division's core of operations for animal production and support. A metallic barn houses facilities for large animal care and production. Earthen dams have been constructed to stop massive erosion that has occurred during the past 25 years. This measure, along with other land management techniques, has brought about a definite transformation to most of the 361 acres of the Veterinary Resources Division as a productive livestock maintenance area. Full-time professional veterinary staff are now based on site at the division. Dr. John Jardine, chief of the section of experimental animals at MD Anderson, directs the veterinary resources program. The scope of the division's activities covers animal production and support services to the University of Texas System Cancer Center, the Carcinogenesis Center, additional University of Texas System institutions, and other state institutions. Research in such areas as animal cancers, radiobiology, immunology, primatology, comparative pathology, and anesthesiology, and both undergraduate and graduate level medical and paramedical educational programs. The Veterinary Resources Division educational program includes participation in a cooperative program with Texas A&M University for postdoctoral studies in laboratory animals and oncology. In addition, the division offers opportunities for veterinary staff from other University of Texas system institutions to participate in a scientific advisory capacity. The basic elements of the Veterinary Resources Division constitute a life support facility designed to safeguard animal health and welfare, as well as to support teaching and research projects on the premises. Accommodations are being provided in the most economical environmental setting, where adequate sanitation, nutrition, health care, infectious disease, and parasite control will be available. This scale model of modular animal units prepared by professors Richard Swallow and John Thompson of the University of Texas School of Architecture represents some of the modern facilities planned for study of animal science and technology. At present, the animal population includes dairy and beef cattle, herds of domestic sheep and goats, Barbados sheep, African Nilgai antelope, colonies of rhesus, squirrel monkeys, and cebus monkeys, stump-tailed macaque, rabbit, rodent, and opossum aggregates. Research activities supported by the division's animal population are comprehensive. Beef cattle with ocular squamous cell carcinoma, or cancer of the eye, are being studied in hopes of developing methods of controlling the costly disease in man and animal. Veterinary researchers are following the natural history of leukemia in adult dairy cattle, as well as in offspring, in order to have access to the bone marrow at a very early age, and a definition of all tissue pathology, as this disease has human counterpart. There is a particular interest in the RHLA typing in the colony of rhesus monkeys that serves as a model for bone marrow transplantation in the immunologically suppressed or irradiated human patient. Swine and monkeys are involved in a rather intensive program of fast neutron therapy one of the more unique projects in radiotherapy and radiobiology. Pregnant ewes are being used for pediatric and gynecological studies. As the programs at Fisher, the University of Texas Biomedical Units, and various other state institutions increase, the Veterinary Resources Division also will have to be expanded. Furthermore, the costly and time-consuming procedures of testing carcinogens on laboratory animals will entail a spectrum of new research approaches. Aside from the production of usual laboratory animals, another service project of the Veterinary Resources Division will be the propagation of certain animals critical to specific research, such as pathogen-free rodents and rabbits. Biological supplies are produced for research and testing. Animals endangered or nearing extinction will be carefully collected and bred to provide for the preservation of their species. The extensive research animal facilities at the Veterinary Resources Division of the Science Park will provide an invaluable adjunct to the studies conducted at the Bisher Division. As part of the University of Texas System Cancer Center, the Science Park will further the goals of the University of Texas Oncology Council, 
which broadens the responsibilities of the cancer center to coordinate cancer efforts in all components of the University of Texas system. Support of the Science Park has been encouraging. Endorsement by state, local, and national offices indicates their recognition of the project's significance. Efforts are continuing for support of research and construction costs. As we get a better understanding of the environmental agents which contribute to the cause of cancer, we should be able to remove such substances from the environment and move toward the ultimate objective of cancer prevention. Through the many research and educational programs, both ongoing and proposed for the Science Park Divisions and for M.D. Anderson, the University of Texas System Cancer Center is intensifying its efforts to learn the solutions to a healthier world, hopefully cancer cured, and perhaps one day, cancer free.